In this second video about Azure Service Bus and Large Messages, we're going to explore the option of using a session and a transaction to flow a larger amount of data through by splitting it across a series of messages. Now, the first thing to note this time, in the last um, demo we used the request queue and the response queue and we talked about how the request queue had no properties set and the response queue had the, re uh, the require session enabled so that we could um, we could correlate the messages for an RPC pattern. Now, this time the we've got a new request queue called request un, uh, request dash session, and we've also enabled session on this queue because when we send a message, we want to actually indicate that there's a, a bunch of messages in that series. The um, the sample application is very similar, so again we've got this shared assembly with the message type, which will be our very big data type. And on the client side, this time we, um, we've we got our new settings for the request queue up here. And we'll create our message in factory, we'll, um, we'll create our, our data, that'll populate our very big data type object. We'll set our correlation and session ID and stuff like that. And then when we send a message, what's different this time is that we're gonna um, firstly we're gonna do it within a transaction scope. So this will apply a transaction around the commit to the queue. So that'll mean either all the messages we send will write to the queue or none of them will, and we won't have this chance of losing some messages. The next thing we're gonna do is um, we going to deserialize, uh, sorry, serialize the um, our very big data type to a stream and then we're going to iterate through the stream and basically break it down into chunks. So with each chunk where um, we're going to populate a service bus, um, service bus brokered message and we're going to put the, the buffer from that chunk of the stream to be the message body and then we're going to apply the um, the properties like we did previously for the session ID reply to and stuff like that but this time we, we've got something um, extra we need to do so when we send a series of messages we need to basically tell the receiver how many messages to expect in the session and also which message or which um, index this message is out of that series of messages and that'll help it know when the session starts, how many, how long to wait for, and when it gets all the messages, it'll help them help get them in the correct order so that they can be deserialized, so we don't get a bad message at the other end. Um, the, I guess the next thing is, um, as well as the total number of messages, just to make life easier, when I get to the last chunk, I've also just applied another property called, I've just called it end of file, indicating that this that's the last message. Um, this time I'm also using the send async method and that'll let me just um, rather than having to wait for every every message to be to effectively be sent it'll basically just let me um, use the async program and model and just push them all out and, and iterate over it really quickly. The, um, the receiver side again so this is a little bit different this time and we create our receiver we'll ex so Previously we were just creating a receiver, this time we'll create um, a, mes a message session and then we'll keep polling against this session and receiving messages and we'll do a couple of things here. So if it's the first message we'll set up some properties and, and get our sort of details for the reply to. <coughs> One thing to indicate here is that if I send the messages I'm going to have to set the right um, or appropriate properties on every message as well so it would be silly to send a reply to queue that was different on message one to message two because that would you know how would I know which one to send it to so in this case I'm just grabbing those off the first message and then what I'm going to do is basically um, populate a, an array of these messages that come in and I know how many messages from the properties to expect so I can set the array size and then as I receive each message, I just populate it its place in the array. When I know um, I've got all the messages, so I could either use the end of file or I could count how many I've received to know when I've got them all. I'm then going to um, I'm going to use this class I've got here called the chunked message builder, which will basically just go through and, and kind of um, 
rehydrate the messages back together. So if we take a quick look at that, and you can see here it's just going to go across the array of brokered messages and just write the body into a stream and at the end of that we should have a nice stream with all the original data in. And then once we've got all our messages, we've we've kind of rebuilt our, our original data, we can then just complete all of those messages and again I've used the async uh, model for this. So that'll, that'll commit the um, action that we've received all the messages and with that, um, just point of note here is that's all within a transaction scope as well. So we'll either receive all the messages and successfully acknowledge them, or we'll, or they'll just drop back onto the queue and they'll be picked up the next time. So after that, once we've deserialized our message, we can then um, create our response message. So we're going to just look at the stream length, create the letter I, however many times that we got sent the letter H. Um, create the object for sending back and then we'll use a very similar uh, method to what we sent originally where we'll um, we'll use a transaction again and we'll uh, we'll serialize that um, very big data type and then in a chunked fashion we'll create a series of messages within the transaction and again we'll we'll use the properties for message number and total number of messages and we'll asynchronously send them and then hopefully on the receiver side we'll we can see the code we saw earlier where it'll receive all those messages and it'll do very similar to what it what it did on the um on the receiver side but the difference this time is that the message session is going to use our session id that we applied originally so that'll make sure when we receive messages we only receive back the ones we want and somebody else's messages will go go to them and we wouldn't collect the wrong ones so let's now take a look at this in action and just to note um, we'll start off with our with our hundred thousand characters here so we've got the um, console with the blue texts the client console with the green text the receiver and if we go and click to send our message and you can see it's sent 49 messages and you can see the receivers pulling these all in and then the big chunk of text was the the right out of the um, all the H's that were on the request message, and then it went and sent 49 messages back. And on the on the client side, it, the text a little bit too um, too quick for us to catch that, but hopefully you saw that it received all those messages, and then wrote the all the eyes from the body of the response message. Now that was. Um, that was inside the transaction scope, so we've sent 49 messages, but we know the thresholds um, 100 messages. So let's increase the data size and see if we can break that now. So we've got our client on the left in the blue text and our receiver in the green text on the right. And if we click a, click the button to um, start sending messages, and you'll see that it'll start sending through the messages now. And while it's waiting to commit that transaction, We'll see in a few few moments there that we'll get an error from service bus. You can see here it's jumped in and we've we've got our aggregate exception. So if we have a look at the detail for that, and you can see that our inner exception tells us that we we try to um we cannot send more than 100 messages in a single transaction. So straight away there, we know that we're going to have um, re you know pass the threshold of that um, of that pattern, and we can only send 100 messages that will commit without any problems. So we can see that with this option, we've got the ability to increase the size of data that we can send by sending a series of messages rather than a single message. But the trade-off for that is we can only go so far. And if we want to have the um, the sort of guarantees of a transaction around our message, so we've got an all or nothing pattern, we we trade off that the data can only go up to a hundred messages.